Could you talk a little bit about how, you know, all foods that contain fat actually contain all three fats? Because I think this is something that's greatly misunderstood. People don't realise that animal foods also contain monounsaturated fat and polyunsaturated fats. And you mentioned omega-3 and omega-6 ratios before would you talk about how important they are and how we've got out of whack with those yeah, as well so um fats 101 um and this is quite interesting when when i say facts about fat at conferences because you can look at people in the audience um and you can see some real penny drop moments so um facts about fat um every food that contains fat contains all three fats saturated monounsaturated and polyunsaturated there are no exceptions now, the only food that I found that contains zero fat is sucrose, table sugar, because table sugar is 100% carbohydrate, 100% uselessness, um, but it also happens to contain no fat. Um, I thought for a while that some foods didn't contain fat, perhaps things like lettuce or blueberries or whatever, but they do. They contain at least a trace of fat. So if you look at a planet of blueberries or strawberries and they have the full fat information on there, um, you will see that they've got a trace of fat and then go back to that first or if they've got a trace of fat, they've got a trace of saturated fat and monounsaturated fat and polyunsaturated fat. Now, the second interesting fact about fat is that the only food group that has more saturated than unsaturated fat is dairy products. Now, there is an individual food there's, so there's the coconut there's coconut oil and coconut and coconut oil have more saturated than unsaturated fat but i'm talking about food groups because then you can look at nutrition at a higher level so when you realize that that's the only food group that has more saturated than unsaturated fat it follows that meat has more unsaturated fat and fish has more unsaturated fat and eggs have more unsaturated fat and even lard i love this one lard is just fat from pig so it's a meat derivative and it has more unsaturated fat than saturated fat and so i have a slide um, if you have show notes that go out with this i'm happy to send you the slide oh, where i've got a picture fabulous. of a steak um, and mm. it's a steak before it's cooked because i think you should always look at food in its rawest state otherwise you get into how well done was it and how was it cooked so you take a 100 gram steak in its raw form approximately 70 percent of that is water and about 21% of it, I think it's 71 water, 21% protein. You've then got a tiny amount of ash and minerals, but you essentially end up with 7% of that steak is fat. Now of those seven percentage points that are fat, two are saturated fat. And yet you'll have dietitians running around saying red meat is full of saturated fat. And my response to that is saturated fat is literally the last thing that it is because you've got water and then you've got protein and then you've got unsaturated fat and then you've got saturated fat. And that is the last thing that it is. But people think it's full of saturated fat. Now, not that saturated fat is bad and unsaturated fat is good, but just to educate some people in the yeah. basics of fat and nutrition. I'm making no judgment about any of them because it makes no sense to me. You know, are you seriously trying to tell me that in that steak, nature put in five percent of unsaturated fat because it's going to save your life and nature put in two percent of saturated fat because it's going to kill you because that's what people think they think saturated yeah. fat is going to kill you and unsaturated fat is going to save you like, how stupid do you have to be to believe that i mean seriously how stupid do you have to be it is insane nature is not well, trying to kill us nature's not done that I don't think the public are aware. I mean, I think the public look at animal foods and all they all that has been ingrained is it's saturated fat. And people are just not aware of the of the details. Do you want to talk about olive oil and the and the range yeah. of fat and olive oil? It just jumped into my head then actually. Okay, so olive oil is fourteen percent saturated fat. Yeah, there so we go. Steak is two percent saturated mm. fat. Olive oil is fourteen percent saturated oh. fat. And we're told olive oil is marvelous and the elixir of whatever and, and red meat is going to kill you. I mean, when you know something about nutrition, when you educate yourself about nutrition, what we are being told about nutrition is utterly insane. So, I mean, there's also oily fish. So you look at 100 grams of oily fish, mackerel is, is the one that I've used in my comparison in conferences. 
and then the 100 grams of sirloin rump steak, whatever you pick. And the oily fish has got, I think from memory, twice the total fat and one and a half times the saturated fat as the red meat. But we're told we can have some oily fish, but we're told not to eat red meat in mm. the name of fat. Um, it, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I'm not saying meat is good and fish is bad or olive oil is good. And they're all good natural foods. There are far more nutrients in red meat and fish than there are in olive oil. In olive oil, you'll get a couple of fat soluble nutrients and you'll get bugger all else. Mm. Um, but I'm not saying olive oil is bad food. It's fine as a salad dressing and it's fine used in a stir fry or something. Um, but it's no magic potion. It's no Mediterranean elixir or whatever. Um, it's quite nutrient poor in density because it's so high in calories and so useless in nutrients mm. as opposed to meat and fish and eggs and dairy, which are the complete opposite. So I was just asking you about seed oils, vegetable oils, which are really seed oils, um, and the omega-3, omega-6 ratios, and also how they're manufactured. Because um, again, I think people have no idea that the stuff they're glugging onto their food and cooking with, I, I yeah. think they have no idea what it's all about. Yeah. So um, we've got two essential fats and in nutrition, the word essential means something that we must consume. The body can't make it. Um, so if anything is, is called um, an essential nutrient, that's just what it means. So there are two essential fats and we know them as omega-3 and omega-6. And over time, um, we have typically consumed those somewhere in a ratio of between one to one. So every one unit of omega-3, we've got one unit of omega-6. Or maybe we've been at about a level of maybe four to six omega-6 for every one unit of omega-3. So there is a range and we can have more omega-6 than omega-3. Um, but we are now working or, or, or consuming at a level of at least 20 times omega-6 to omega-3, um, which a lot of researchers believe is behind the increase in inflammatory conditions that we're seeing at the moment, whether it's just people generally feeling unwell or actually getting quite serious inflammatory conditions. And that might include heart disease, it might include cancer, it almost certainly includes arthritis, um, we don't know how far things like this are implicated in, in things like dementia, but we can't move away from how we're supposed to eat and just assume we're going to be able to get away with it. So in our demonization of fat, we're going back to those dietary fat guidelines again, not only was one huge consequence that we eat less fat, so we eat more carbohydrate, the whole eat less saturated fat and the demonization of animal foods meant that we started eating more unsaturated fat. And for example, um, fast food almost overnight switched from cooking chips, for example, in lard, which is a relatively stable fat to cook things in, to cooking chips in seed oils. I think you're right to call them that rather than vegetable oils. Um, and the more unsaturated, the higher the polyunsaturated fat content in an oil, the more we know it mutates at high temperatures. And of course, not only have we done this, but we've actually over time eaten a lot more of the foods that we cook in those oils. So when I was a child, oh gosh, fish and chips was a treat that you might have once in a blue moon. Um, and maybe you might have a fizzy drink with it. And it really, I, I remember going up to my grandparents and we would have a fizzy pop and fish and chips um, and it was such a treat. I mean, it, I can remember it today. It was so exciting. Um, and now you've got people eating junk food for their meals. Some people two or three times a day, they might have a McDonald's breakfast. They might have a McDonald's lunch or another burger. So they're consuming bad foods in the first place, burgers and, and chips and milkshake and fizzy drinks. But they're consuming these things that have been cooked in these highly unsaturated oils that have mutated at high temperatures. And we do know some of the consequences of this. It cannot be a coincidence that we have far greater incidence of cancer than we did when I was younger because we've essentially moved away from eating things that we should eat. Now, there'd be many other things in the environment that could be potential causes of cancer, and that might be things like PCBs 
in the water or plastics and interactions with um, fake substances that have come into the home or chemicals or toiletries, um, beauty products, lipstick, how much lipstick do we eat on an annual basis? There's a lot going on there. I'm not saying it's entirely seed oils, but seed oils definitely play a part in the fact that we are ingesting some things that we shouldn't be ingesting that have made the balance that we should have in our essential fat makeup quite imbalanced and, and has, has been quite harmful to health. Yeah, it's kind of like a combination, isn't it, of a whole of a whole lot of things. But I think um, that age-related macular degeneration is an, is something that's been you know associated with high intakes of seed oils, isn't it? Yeah, and that might be retinol as well. That mm. might be the fact that people on more plant-based diets we don't eat liver as much as we yeah. used to. When I was a child, I had liver once a week, whether I liked it or not. Um, mm. And we don't we don't do that anymore. And it's just the most fantastic source of retinol. And a, a lot of young people will not be getting that in their diet. They'll just be deficient. Well, we grew up on liver. My dad hunted. Um, I grew up very rural, very rural New Zealand. And so all our meat was wild game that dad, that dad hunted. Um, we always ate, ate the liver, grew the vegetables in the garden. And, you know, I mean, I can probably remember having fish and chips maybe twice as a child. Um, we had chocolate. We had what they call shopping day. So um, because we live so remote, everybody had one day to go to town. <laughs> to do their shopping yeah. and dad mum and dad would come home with a king size bar of chocolate and it would get broken into individual little bits and yeah. you know there were eight in the family and often hanger on us and you got like passed around one piece each and this was like our monthly you know yeah. treat yeah. you know and now you sit down and eat a bar of chocolate without even giving it any thoughts yeah. so yeah, yeah it's it's quite interesting